Okay, uh, good afternoon guys, or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, and welcome to this week's installation of our webinar program. Today we're going to be talking about O-Line um, and O-Line with Scalable Resolution. Uh, my name is Ben Tucker. I'm a product support engineer here at Martin Audio, um, and that involves uh, co-writing this training with my colleagues um, in the product support team. Um, Simon is online um, to answer any of your questions throughout this webinar, should you have any. Um, and my, also part of my job is to deliver these webinars as well as in-person training um, and help anyone with any projects they might have and commissioning systems. So today we are going to be looking over the O-Line system um, and first of all we'll take a little introduction to what it is. So it's an award-winning aesthetically pleasing modular micro line array uh, that's designed for a wide variety of architectural applications uh, ranging from houses of warships to transport terminals etc. Um, it combines innovative acoustic technology with powerful optimization software to achieve optimum coverage and unprecedented accuracy over a predefined area. Um, however, in many applications, an O-line array can be driven using only one amplifier channel and processed with basic EQ and limiting. So as I've mentioned, it's a two-way micro line array element um, with a pretty substantial frequency response down to 85 hertz from this tiny little box. Um, it'll churn out 104 dB continuous. And one of the key factors about the O-Line series, and in fact, any of our line array technology is the 100 degree smooth horizontal dispersion uh, that we achieve using some acoustic loading techniques that we'll talk about later on. Um, and each cabinet has a five degree vertical dispersion. And of course, the uh, overall array um, defines the maximum vertical dispersion. So I've touched already on a couple of applications, uh, the House of the Worships and Transport Terminals, but it's also sat really nicely at home in museums, conference centres, lecture theatres, as well as bars and restaurants. And uh, why do we choose O-Line over fixed DSP columns? Um, really, the biggest drawback uh, with the beam is um, they work on having this single beam right down the center of the uh, kind of coverage, and then it fades off towards the outer edges of that beam. Um, and this has its limitations in that um, there's no, the, there's a lack of uniformity of coverage within this beam. Whereas with an O-line system, um, in particular an optimized O-line system, um, we start by defining where we want our audience area to be um, and how we want the array to cover it. So we can see that in that image that uh, the green dots represent virtual microphones throughout an audience area. And we are asking the array to achieve a smooth and consistent frequency response and a targeted SPL profile from the front to the back of those green dots. Um, with O-Line, there's a whole host of accessories that uh, can aid in deployment method from wall brackets to flying systems and a nice little bottom plate to um, make the array even more aesthetically pleasing. So I touched already on the uh, horizontal control of the array. And if we look at this uh, plot here, which is a mathematical model uh, using boundary element techniques of a fairly common driver layout in a column loudspeaker with a vertical array of direct radiating tweeters mounted in the front of the low frequency units. And we can see how the horizontal beam width is pretty poorly controlled. Uh, it's very wide below the crossover point, around 3.2K, and it's really inconsistent uh, above it in terms of that horizontal dispersion. Now, if we look at a plot of an O-line system, um, the physical arrangement of the drive units results in a far better control than more consistent beam width right through its operating band. So we see that it's pretty consistent, um, 100 degrees um and slightly wider as we get down to the lower frequency um of throughout the entire operating band and if we look at that another way um here we're looking at in red the on axis on axis response of an airline system and in blue the off axis so they're very consistent right the way through the pass band again 
Now, teaming that um, with our optimized uh, technology, um, we can introduce scalable resolution. And what scalable resolution does is allows us to split the array up into uh, as many amplifier channels as we want, um, enter some parameters into a piece of software, and it will give us a preset that we can then load into the amplifier channels or into the processor channels to um, aid in creating that consistent frequency response and targeted profile that we saw earlier on in that screenshot. Um, as well as that, we can also target and control areas outside of the audience, such as hard avoid and the leakage areas. So scalable resolution is decided by the number of boxes to amplifier channels. So as well as an O-line array being run entirely off one amplifier channel, um, we can run anything from one box resolution, that you can see on the right there, where every box has its own amplifier channel and DSP, right down to eight box resolution, where every eight boxes are receiving the same DSP and amplification and anywhere in between. So if we look at that in graph form, um, we're seeing here 16 box hang of O-line. First of all, an eight box resolution. So we split the array in half and the top hat, top eight cabinets are all fed the same DSP and respectively, the bottom eight cabinets are fed their own DSP. Um, and we're looking there, the red, yellow and green uh, represent the audience positions. So the, the red, the front, the mixed position in yellow and the back of the audience in green. And you can see um, they're very different to one another. Um, there's quite a bit of, um, sorry, excuse me. There's quite a variation in SPL and the response throughout the area. Um, and as well, looking at the blue trace, which is the rejection behind the loudspeaker, um, there is not unprecedentedly quiet uh, behind it and there's that big spike there um, right in the middle of the vocal band. So if we up the resolution now to one box resolution where every cabinet in the array has its own DSP, uh, the audience areas are converging on one another and we're getting quite a consistent response right the way through and that rejection behind um, has now dropped away really nicely up the operating band. So looking at the loudspeaker itself, um, we have these small little uh, 0.55 inch HF devices, which are spaced 0.8 inches apart right down the center of the O-line cabinet. Um, and we do this um, with this small spacing to control the vertical dispersion without creating comb filtering in the, uh, in the vertical axes from the high frequency section. And next to them are these small little uh, three and a half inch LF devices mounted in the horn wall. Um, they are equally spaced for consistent passing control. And those shaped diaphragms allow the, uh, the HF horn to operate right through its pass band without interfering. Now, this is uh, what it looks, the LF driver looks like. Um, and being just three and a half inches in diameter means there's a trade-off here in getting an acceptable frequency response and efficiency in such a small driver. As we really didn't want to sacrifice any further SPL from the system, uh, we need to eliminate lossy high order of passive crossovers. Um, so the driver here is designed to naturally drop off in level at the desired crossover point by use of a decoupling ring between the diaphragm and the motor unit. And what this ring does is it absorbs energy above 2K whilst having minimal effect below that point. And we can see the result of that here in this graph. So um, the hardware of the system and deploying it, it's really quite easy to do. Um, simply in order to change cabinet angles and assemble these arrays, um, we can remove that pin retainer the orange one there, um, and remove the four angle pins. We can then flex the array together to the correct angle location and reinsert the pins in the corresponding holes for the required angle. And then we reapply the pin container to lock it in place. Now, each module um, has a four pole Phoenix connector in the rear, 
uh, providing input and link output. And as standard, a block of four modules comes supplied with a ready fitted wiring loom, which connects all these modules in parallel. Um, and we can block um, these modules together um, using this series parallel connector board that you can see there. And in terms of rigging the system, um, there are two ways we can do it. We can either wall mount the system, as we can see here, um, where the wall bracket attaches to the lower section of the array. And then the, there's a pullback type system uh, near the top, which helps to achieve the optimal array aim and just secure it. Or it could be flown from steel wire using the eye bolt positions in the top of the flying bracket. And again, a pullback type bracket attaches to the lower portion of the array. And it's as simple as that. Now we've talked uh, about scalable resolution and briefly that you can run this system off one amplifier channel. Now, of course, um, four of these modules are 16 ohms and they're parallel together, creating a four ohm load. Uh, but we can link them together in series parallel um, and drive as many boxes as we like um, off a single amplifier channel. And we have on our website and in the user guide this handy little table with some recommended power handling requirements for varying size arrays. But of course, if we do want to run the system uh, with scalable resolution um, and get the most out of the system, um, we can turn our attention to the ICON amplifiers. So in particular, the IK81, uh, which is an eight channel D-class amp, or class D amp rather, um, with a full host of DSP on board, as well as the common um, IIR filters. Each amp has the equivalent of a thousand taps of FIR filters per output channel. Um, and although a little over spec, this amplifier will deliver 1250 watts per channel. Um, it can also be hooked up to a network for system operation and monitoring. It has analog AES3 and Dante inputs on board and some grouping and EQ for effective control of large systems. And this is controlled via our proprietary VNet software. As well as the RK81 amplifier, we also have the DX4 processor, um, which in many regards is identical to the RK81 amplifier, uh, with the main factor being that it doesn't have eight channels of amplification bolted onto it. Um, so it has all the same IO, all the same processing inside, and uh, can be paired with any amplifier um, you wish to drive the system in, a, in an optimized fashion. Um, but of course, you can pair it really easily with our VIA series of amplif amplifiers. There's four models in the range, two two-channel amps and two four-channel amplifiers, all of which are class D. And the output uh, power ranging from 250 watts per channel at eight ohms right the way up to 1600 watts per channel at eight ohms. And the smallest in the range, the VIA 2004, uh, is the perfect partner for these optimized systems in conjunction with the DX4 processor that we just saw. So there's a couple of pieces of software um, that we might want to use in order to get our system up and running. First of which is Display 2.3, which is the proprietary software for not only um, optimized online systems, but also MLA, and our Wavefront Precision Series products. And this piece of software um, allows you to input some venue data and array data, and then it will numerically optimize to define the cabinet angles and DSP coefficients. It has a really straightforward workflow uh, from that venue design to the output. And these, are, these coefficients uh, can be loaded directly into MLA if we're working with MLA systems or into ICON amplifiers and DX4 processors with wavefront precision and O-line systems. So I've mentioned already, it's really easy to use. Uh, first of all, you draw a side view of your venue, add in your array, add in your audience area. We can then set the coverage goals for that, not only the audience area, but the non-audience and hard avoid that I mentioned earlier. Um, as well as shaping that SPL profile around the little yellow triangle in the middle there. We then hit the optimize button and the software will work out the optimum display angles for the array. 
We then optimize electronically. First of all, selecting uh, which resolution we wish to run the system at. Uh, so I've already mentioned, I'll reiterate that O-Line can be run from anything from uniform drive right the way up to one channel per one cabinet per DSP channel. And then upload that uh, optimization into the devices and go. So in the display tool, uh, display calculates the best acoustic output during the mechanical optimization stage. So even if we are running the system in uniform drive, it's always a good idea to utilize the software uh, to ensure that you're getting the most out of the system before you start tuning it. And when you come to the EQ tab, uh, the software also calculates a set of IIR parameters that can be added to the system processor, aiding in voicing the system based on the architecture of the array. So the commercial advantages of the airline system um, are that you can design systems to better suit project, project budgets. Uh, we can increase the resolution over time by adding more processors or amplifiers, and there's greater flexibility for larger installation project, projects. So maybe we have a large um, church um, or auditorium where we have our main system as a wavefront precision system, um, of course, optimized, and then adding in some O-line for delay or fill positions. So you're maintaining that sonic signature and you're getting the most consistent response all the way throughout the audience area in the auditorium or church. And tying it all together, uh, we have our ViewNet software, which will allow us to control those DX4 processors and ICON amplifiers. Um, we can upload the optimizations, we can control system levels, EQ. Um, we can manage the presets for the arrays, store and recall EQ curves or system configurations, and we can monitor the system performance. As well, uh, we may want to model our OLAN arrays in ease 4 um, and that's really easy to do. So once we've added our loudspeaker to an Ease project, we right click on the properties menu, change the speaker module to O-Line using the shell GLL uh, that we have in the loudspeaker library. We can now go to the DLL GLL setup tab, open the dialog, and using the import function, uh, we can navigate the XGLC function that we can export from the display file, which will load in all the intercabinet angles and DSP parameters to ensure that it is mapping correctly. And then you model and we get something looking like this. And as you can see, it's very consistent front to back. Finally, uh, we're just gonna have a quick look at some application examples. The first being Spanish Congress Palace. Um, and as you can imagine from the photos, uh, this Congress room doesn't have the best room acoustics. Um, but deploying two arrays of O-Line has everyone hearing the conference content really, really nicely, really easily. Um, and everybody's getting that nice intelligibility that you'd expect um, from any conference. As well, uh, Brigham Young University in Utah, um, here we've deployed two arrays of 60 in O-Line uh, run in Uniform Drive as the main system. And then two fill hangs of eight aside, um, also in uniform drive. So these were chosen here uh, in particular for its musicality and great sound in difficult acoustic environments. Um, so something I haven't yet mentioned, but O-Line is not only great at reproducing speech um, and maintaining intelligibility, but it's also very good musically for um, music reproduction. And we can start to add some optimization. Um, and here we're looking at Central Station in Sydney. Uh, and this menu in particular has a very big reverberation time of five and a half seconds. Um, as you can see by the dimensions there, it's quite large. Um, so we've deployed 120 O-line elements, each uh, with our own DSP channel. So running at one box resolution, which is allowing everybody walking around to hear uh, all the announcements and everything really clearly. And again, uh, using scalable resolution, this is an example where the larger arrays use full resolution, um, and we can see there, and the smaller arrays are used in uniform drive. 
So you can mix and match between running scalable resolution and single channel mode, um, still maintaining that sonic signature that I mentioned earlier um, and keeping that clarity and consistency throughout the audience. So in summary, um, O-Line is a modular micro line array for maximum deployment flexibility. It can be software optimized um, for focused sound energy, additional DSP optimized functionality for increased coverage, consistency, and control. And due to the acoustic design of the cabinets, uh, it's side load free, vertical dispersion from the high frequency section. It's ideal for high quality music reproduction as well as speech and is architecturally sympathetic for discrete deployment methods. Um, and with that, um, it's been a very quick introduction to the airline system. Um, if you guys have any questions now, uh, we'll open the floor. Okay, um, so the maximum resolution for an array uh, can be one box resolution. So every channel in the, every speaker in the array, sorry, uh, can have its own DSP channel. Depending on how you want to run it, um, you, if you want to run the system optimized, you will need to use uh, either the DX4 processor or Icon amplifier. The DX4 processor can be used, of course, with any amplifier. Um, if you want, wish to run the system in uniform drive, as long as you have some basic limiting uh, and EQ control, you can run it with any processor or uh, system. Uh, yes, you can get uh, the O-Line system in different colors. Um, any RAL color uh, we we can do. Hopefully you can hear me. Hi, this is uh, Simon speaking. I'm just going to jump in and jump on uh, Lee's question there. Uh, is there any thought to the current roadmap in offering linear research or other amplifiers? So I guess you're talking about having a lower cost um, installation amplifier that you would use um, with these processes. So you can actually use any of our um, via range amplifiers if you needed a um, lower cost solution, because as you say, O-Line is a very, um, a, a very low power system. They're only about uh, 50 watts a box. So you don't need a huge amount of headroom or kind of horsepower behind that. Uh, so you can use our DX4 processors uh, which will take the FIR optimization out of um, display in the same way that our Icon amplifiers would or our MLA products, and then you can then power that from a third-party amplifier if you if you want to, or um, you can use our via range of amplifiers. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, Alexander, no, you cannot adjust the horizontal dispersion. Um, it's fixed 100 degree uh, in the array. Um, but the display software does allow you to adjust the vertical dispersion. Uh, Keo, are you talking about um, how the software calculates um, the, the presets? Um, you know, if you want to reword that, basically we run through a, a whole bunch of um, algorithms to create a, an FIR filter set um, based on the parameters that we put into the software. So if we draw the venue, um, we've then used our mechanical optimization to give us display angles we require. Um, and then from that acoustic output, we can design a filter set using our kind of display algorithms to give us the most easy and even frequency response um, across that audience area as well, and equally avoid areas as well if we wish. Nicely said, Sai. Oh, thank you. Uh, another question from Lee there. I, I don't think, um, we, we don't really have any issues with any form of limiter with O-Line, to be honest. It's not really the kind of system that you would um, drive into limit for any um, reason. So the benefits of having um, a particularly intelligent limiter for uh, a system mainly designed for sort of speech, I guess, um, hasn't been an issue in the past. But the limiters in the DX4 are absolutely up to standard for doing the job 
yeah, again, um, TJ, to, to answer your question, um, depending on how you wish to run the system, um, if you are intending on playing music through it, yes, it may be a good idea to um, add a bit of low frequency. Uh, any of our SX series subwoofers partner really well with it, in particular the SX 112 or 212 subwoofer um, do pair very nicely with an O-line system. And you'd only need uh, maybe one of these per, say, um, hang of eight, even 12 O-line. Alexander, um, I mentioned earlier on that um, utilizing the display software, even if you aren't intending on optimizing the system, um, is a good way to go because it calculates the best acoustic output of the array based on the mechanical information, as well as it will give you a set of uh, standard EQ settings um, that can be added to any third party processor. All right, if you guys uh, have no more questions, um, we'll move forward. Um, next week, uh, we have our training systems on point source, and that is with uh, our colleague Robin Dibble. Um, and that can be, that's next Wednesday, again at 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. BST. Um, I think there's also one at 12. Uh, Sorry, can you just confirm that? Yeah, there, there's also one at midday. Um... Uh, BST as well, so it's GMT plus one. Um, and that uh, will be talking all about point source systems um, and looking at our range of point source um, and getting to know how to deploy them. Um, so thank you for joining um, and thanks to the guys uh, tuning on on Facebook. Um, and thanks to Dom for covering the comment section over there. Um, and I hope you have an enjoyable rest of the day wherever you are and stay safe. Thanks guys.